Hi, hello, welcome folks. It's my pleasure to welcome you all once again to Lit Valentine. Today, we are going to see some of the interesting things in our video. So, I hope you all will enjoy it today. With this, let's move on to the next slide. Idioms to improve your vocabulary. So the first word is, every dog has his day. It means, everyone will be lucky someday. Every dog has his day, meaning, everyone will be lucky someday. If you guys want to use the word, everyone will be lucky someday, instead of, Using some other words you can use, every dog has his day. These words will make you stand unique among the common speakers. With this, let's move on to the next slide. Be like chalk and cheese, meaning be absolutely different. If you want to say something that is absolutely different, you can use the word be like chalk and cheese. Cost a fortune, meaning very expensive. If you want to point out someone or something which is very expensive, instead of using the same words like expensive, you can use the words like cost a fortune. Sleeping dogs lie. It means not to disturb someone or not. If you want to say that you should not disturb someone, you can use the word let sleeping dogs lie. The next word is the green eyed monster meaning jealousy. If you want to utter the word jealousy which is the common word which we are speaking nowadays. Instead you can use the word the green eyed monster. It will make you stand unique among the common speaker guys. So don't forget to use the words. And I want to say this thing. Don't just memorize all these words which I am giving you now. Instead, use it while you are talking and writing. It will automatically make you to know these words and make you familiarize with these words. So with this, let's move on to the next slide. What we discussed so far? So far, we had discussed about the foundations of modern European literature and the beginning of Greek classicism and the famous classical writer Homer and his works like Iliad, Odyssey, Homeric Hymn and Epic Cycle and we also discussed the, about the writer Sappho who was a female poet who also lived during the time of Homer. And today, we are going to see some other writer. Before that, let us introduce you about the Athens. Athens is one of the city-states of Greece. Understand that Greek is an archipelago. Archipelago in the sense, group of islands. Archipelago, the meaning of archipelago means group of islands and Athens is ruled by the Pericles. It was actually a powerful tyrant during the 6th century BC guys. You can see the brilliance in Athens because it was one of the city states of Greece and it was the city of archipelago meaning a group of islands among the small islands in the city-states, the most powerful was the Athens, which was ruled by the Pericles, who was a very powerful tyrant during those days. And there was also a flourishing of learning, art, literature in Athens at that time. And this is the beginning of the classical period, and it was at this time the tragedy started developing. So, the development of tragedy. It was the time the tragedy got developed. Aristotle stated that 
Tragedy is the best art form and tragedy developed in relation to the festival of Dionysia. A religious festival celebrated to honor the god of wine and merry, Dionysius. Dionysius is actually the god of wine and merry and people during those days they celebrated the god of wine and merry. And Dionysius is a Greek god. He is called as Bacchus in Rome. In Greek it is called as Dionysius and in Rome it is called as Bacchus. About the initiation of tragedy. So how the tragedy got developed? In city Dionysia there was a lot of merriment and enjoyment taken place due to the festival of Dionysius to celebrate the god of wine and merry. So that was the time they had a ritual. What is the ritual? It was everybody has to take part in that competition who has to present three tragedies and one satire play or comedy. This was the competition during those days especially while they are celebrating the Dionysius festival. It was actually the ritual of those days. Do you know in that competition who won actually it was Aeschylus. Aeschylus is called the father of tragedians. Aeschylus the father of tragedians. Let us know something about Aeschylus. Aeschylus was an ancient Greek tragedian. He is also the first whose plays still survive. He is called as the father of tragedy. It is believed that nearly 70 to 90 plays of his are survived and there is a long standing debate on one of his play Prometheus Bound. Some believe that it was written by his son Euphorion. Aristotle also stated that he expanded the number of characters in his plays to allow conflict among them whereas characters previously had interacted with the chorus. Aeschylus may be the first one as considered as the dramatists who present plays as tragedy. And as I said to you before, during that competition, everybody has to present three tragedies and one satire play and it was Aeschylus who presented the three tragedies and that is why there were remained trilogies guys. In ancient tragedies, they has to present three tragedies at a time. So, that was the time the trilogies were present. So, Aeschylus was the first person who remained as a tragic figure who created the tragedies. His Orestia is the only ancient example of this form because his Orestia has three plays. We will discuss about this in the upcoming slides. So the other thing was the Persians is the only surviving classical Greek tragedy of Aeschylus which concerned with contemporary events and useful source of information about its period. It was also a play written by Aeschylus and even in today's academics literary Orestia is acclaimed. Orestia is the famous work of Aeschylus. Aeschylus also written some other works but the most famous one was Orestia. And inscription on his graveyard written as Belonging to the city signifies the primary importance. The next thing is, as I said you before, he was an ancient Greek tragedian and he is also the first whose place still survive. He is called as the father of tragedy and it is believed that nearly 70 to 90 of his plays have survived and there is a long standing debate on one of his plays. Prometheus Bound which is believed that it was written by his son Euphorion and Aristotle also said that he expanded the number of characters in his plays to allow conflict among them whereas characters previously had interacted with the chorus. Aristotle also claimed that 
Aristoteles added the second character deuter agonist to the Greek stage. Deuter agonist to the Greek stage. The next thing is Aristoteles seven survived tragedies. As I said to you before, Orestia is the famous play of Aristoteles. Apart from that, he has also written some other tragedies. They are the Persians, Seven Against Thebes, the Suppliants, Orestia Trilogy, Prometheus Bound. Orestia Trilogy has three tragedies. Agamemnon, the Libation Bearers, the Eumenides. This trilogy tells the story of the family of Agamemnon, the king of Argos. What is the story of Agamemnon actually? Agamemnon comes home after the war and his wife kills him. The reason was she had a grudge against him as because he sacrificed her daughter Iphigenia. Do you know who is his wife? The twin sister of Helen of Troy, Clytemnestra. Clytemnestra is the wife of Agamemnon who kills him because he sacrificed her daughter Iphigenia. And Clytemnestra is the twin sister of Helen of Troy. The house of Agamemnon is called Atreus. Do you know guys? Helen of Troy destroyed the ancient Greece, the house of Troy, whereas Clytemnestra destroyed the house of Agamemnon. It is called house of Atreus. The next thing is, after that Agamemnon's children, Orestes and Electra did not kept quiet. They took revenge on their father's death and Orestes killed his mother and is haunted by the furies of human ideas. And this is the overall story of Orestia and the story of Agamemnon. With this, we came to the end of the slide. Don't forget to subscribe Lit Valentine for more information, my dear friends, because here I am going to talk to you about the idioms which will improve your vocabulary and also about the English literature its history, the famous writers and their works and about the minor writers and their major works. We are going to see many different informations which you are not unaware about it till now. So please don't forget to subscribe Lit Valentine. Please subscribe it and share it with your friends and ask them to subscribe for getting more relevant information regarding English literature and as well as spoken English.